I'm not usually one to dive into discourse. I also didn't have a deep dive into algebraic geometry and its relationship to Magic the Gathering on my bingo card for today. The Commander Rules Committee just banned Dockside Extortionist, Jeweled Lotus, Nadu, and Mana Crypt, citing that they disproportionately lead to explosive hands, which they define as having five or more mana on turn two. In an explanation for the bans, the Commander Rules Committee says, the philosophy of Commander prioritizes creativity, and one of the ways we've historically reflected that in the rules and ban list is to encourage a slower pace of game. They go on to describe a little bit more about what they mean by the speed of the game and give specific reasons for each card, as well as comment on a notable exception, which I'll mention later. But I'll admit, the thing that caught my eye the most is what they said right here. Removing the other three cards geometrically reduces the number of hands capable of substantial above curve mana generation in the first few turns. This word choice is oddly specific. Geometrically reduces? I actually don't think they're completely wrong, even though they're using this math phrase pretty loosely. But it does have interesting implications for how the Commander Rules Committee mathematically models the probability of opening hands in Commander games. Specifically, how opening hands relate to potential mana generation, which I'm sure is what they're doing. So what does geometrically reduces mean? We need to look towards algebraic geometry. See, it was not on my bucket list for today, but here we are. We typically think of something being geometrically reducible or irreducible as a property. A geometric reduction is taking the same variety and restricting it to a smaller geometry where the operators from the larger field apply to the smaller field. And the RC's assertion is that by removing these cards, they're reducing the geometric space. However, Magic the Gathering operators that apply to the larger geometry will still apply. It feels like we're looking at the space of potential opening hands. They specifically cite five mana as an upper bound, and they're using this probability to restrict the geometry. You can think of it like if you take all of the points in 3D space, we can call that R3, and reduce them to a plane, we'll call that R2. All of the operations that work in R3 are in R2, and you have a reasonable intuition that they'll work the same way. You essentially just lose an entire dimension. This is a reasonable approximation for what it means to be reducible. The important part is that cross products, multiplication and division, and a concept of zero still work. In this rules decision, all of your other cards should still behave with the same rules and mechanics, just with a smaller subset of cards. Brilliant. Many people online have looked at this geometric reduction and questioned why Soul Ring wasn't also banned, but the Commander's Rules Committee did address Soul Ring and said that Soul Ring is the iconic card of the format and it's significantly tied to the identity of the format that defies the laws of physics in a way that no other card does. Defies the laws of physics? If we can prove that Soul Ring does break the laws of physics, should we write a paper? Which laws of physics? Commander Rules Committee, you have my number. Call me. <laughs>